welcome into Real Deal Sports Talk with KP. It's your boy KP, September 27th, 2018. We are mobile today. We are out and about. Just got out of the Rockies game. You got Thursday night football later tonight with the Vikings at the Rams. Breaking news as far as that goes. Peters will be playing tonight for the Rams with Talib Kweli, or Aqib Talib, excuse me. I was listening to some music. Um, Aqib Talib being out for unforeseeable time as he had ankle surgery this week. Great game later tonight. We'll get to that here in a little bit as we go over our picks and the schedule for week four. So we have... Our week four picks today, we're going to check in on Major League Baseball as they are down to just a few games left in the season. The American League, as we said last time, is sewn up. We know who's doing what. The National League is still very tight, so we'll catch in on that. I was at the Rockies game today. They take a one-game lead over the L.A. Dodgers in the National League West, a one-game lead now over the St. Louis Cardinals in the wild card round for the wild card seed, excuse me. So we'll check in on where the National League is at, and we're going to get to this story. Kyle Brandt this morning on Good Morning Football. We all know him from his time on MTV and what he did there with the reality show. Now he's been quite a good football analyst for a while for the NFL Network, but he lost his cotton picking, excuse me, he lost his damn mind this morning when he said, that uh, Prince is a dollar store Michael Jackson and claiming Guns N' Roses is more influential or better than Prince. So we're going to have to set him straight on the show today. At the end of the show, we're also going to get real a little bit as the Panthers stepped up, grew a pair, and signed Eric Reed today. So let's just jump into it before anything else gets going. We're going to jump into the week four schedule for the NFL got two teams with bye weeks this week the Panthers and Washington they are both off this week so go ahead reset your fantasy lineups if you have not already before you start losing points for having their players and or their defenses playing this week so we talked about it I mentioned it as we started the show LA Rams taking on the Minnesota Vikings tonight the Vikings coming into this game after that ridiculous upset on Sunday to Buffalo seems like a trap game seems like they were not up for their opponent as they were looking forward to this game that falls on the coaching Rams tonight they're without Talib he's not playing Marcus Peters is going to be in with his ankle injury which is surprising to most of us this Rams defense and Rams offense the creativity the youth and the aggression they've been fun to watch this year Last year's Super Bowl champion, the Philadelphia Eagles, I sat there and watched them. It was not fun to watch. It was not fun to watch the Carolina Panthers a few years ago, 15-1. and That team was not good. It wasn't good football. They were winning because they didn't beat themselves, not because of the quality of the game they played in those seasons. We're not seeing that from the Rams right now. And on top of that, the Rams are playing with sportsmanship because you better believe they're taking it off in the second half and not running the score up on a couple of the teams they've faced already this season. It's going to be a blowout. It's going to be an offensive battle. We're still waiting for Kirk Cousins to make his big how-do-you-do moment there in Minnesota as he was supposed to be the difference maker as they shipped Case Keenum out of town. We have not seen that yet. It did not happen this past Sunday. Short week, good defense. We're going to... Minnesota's going to have to bring it tonight if they have a chance. We'll get to my picks after we get through all these games. We got the Jets going into the Jaguars. This could be another battle like what we saw with Tennessee in Jacksonville as the Jets defense, although without names, is kind of an underrated defense. They're going to play hard. They're going to play physical. And they've got some young cats there that are really taking pride in what they do. And it's starting to change the culture there. They need more on the offensive side of the ball. They don't have that right now. Jaguars without Leonard Fournette, they pretty much have nothing on the offensive side of the ball right now. And that includes their quarterback. Defensively, they're as stout as any team in the league. So you can expect this one to probably be another field goal battle unless Fournette is able to go this week. 
Dolphins 3 and 0 in the AFC East going into New England to face the 1 and 2 New England Patriots as they get beat up Monday night by my Detroit Lions. You know, I'm still smiling from that one, but my team needs to put it together week after week. One game and that game's behind us. So now it's time to move forward. Dolphins, look you can only beat the teams on your schedule. You can only play who's on your schedule. You can't fault them for being 3-0 and at this point. But to me, this is a team they're going to come back down to earth. The Patriots are going to get it figured out. Julian Edelman is going to be back, not this week, but I believe next week after his four-game suspension. Josh Gordon, you get him into the mix. All of a sudden, you can't double or triple team Gronk anymore. You're going to have to bring different coverages that's when tom brady can pick you apart that's when josh mcdaniels can start deploying that backfield and those running backs a little more to take advantage of teams the eagles they are at tennessee this week i expect the eagles offense with alshon jeffrey to look a little better this week they're still looking for a solid running game with their two guys being down currently um the titans all defense right now. This is a team they have not gotten it figured out on the offensive side of the ball for the last few seasons. Chaos at the quarterback position right now. Derrick Henry is not putting up the kind of stats they, I'm sure, thought he would. James White is not putting up the numbers I'm sure they thought he would. Texans are taking on the Colts. They started to finally look like they were figuring it out on offense uh, last week in the second half. The Colts lost last week to Philadelphia. A lot of people jumping back onto this Colts team because of Andrew Luck. I'm definitely not there. I think this team still has a lot to prove on both sides of the ball. The Texans are starting to look like they're having a gut check. Like they're at the point where it's like, okay, guys, we need to man up. You know, we were were right there almost in the playoffs last year. Our guy got hurt, changed the season. He's back. We're healthy. Our leader, J.J. Watt, is healthy. We need to start getting this going. Now, you know, they don't have a deep backfield. They don't have the best secondary. But we all expected a lot more from the Texans to this point in the season. I expect them to show out a little bit in this game. The Bills at the Packers, this is a game I've been going back and forth with all week, you guys. Like, with what the Bills did on defense to Minnesota... If it wasn't a case that Minnesota was overlooking Buffalo and Buffalo's defense played more like it did last year, they can give this Packers offense with a hurt Aaron Rodgers trouble. They don't have a lot on the outside. They don't have a dominating running game. Sure, they brought in Jimmy Graham, but at this point in his career, he's only a red zone threat. You're only using him anywhere outside of the red zone if somebody screws up and leaves him open. So does Buffalo carry over that performance on the defensive side of the ball, leaving just enough to where it can be a close game that maybe Josh Allen and that offense makes the play that needs to happen, that they pull out the win this week. I don't know what to expect from that one. This is the game, like the first three weeks, this could be the game that everybody guesses wrong. If you're in a pick em league, I'm sure... You might be in a similar position as me right now as far as this game. The Lions at Dallas. This game will be televised in Denver, so I'll get to watch them live this week instead of just on Game Pass, as it is one of the games Fox is going to be showing around most of the country, actually, thanks to the Cowboys name, the Jerry Boys, the team that underachieves all the time, Their players are superstars whether they're good or not. They can't win a playoff game. They're the most valued franchise in all of sports. Their value keeps going up, but they keep underproducing. Do I expect my favorite team to win this week? Yes, I do. I'll just give you that pick now. We won't have to wait for it. I expect the Lions to win this week. I expect them to go out try and do the same thing they did against New England, ball control, run the ball, give Matthew Stafford protection, and just start picking this defense that really only has pass rushers apart, 
I like their corner, Wouzier. He's going to be a very good corner. He's still young. This is only his second season. He's only played in 16 games, or right around 16 games. But he's going to be good. Their linebackers have not progressed to where any of us, Jalen Smith, uh, Lee's out this week. So the rookie, uh, Van... Van Ehrlich, Van Van, whatever his name is, he's going to be in this week. This is a defense that hasn't gotten there yet. The running game and offensive line is not as dominant as we all expected it to be because of what they had done. And Dak is not the man. He wasn't the man when they drafted him in the third round and they wanted Paxton Lynch ahead of him. And he's not the guy now. He's a game manager. He's good in the RPO system. He can do you know, some play action stuff, but he's not very accurate. His mechanics can be shoddy. And if you pressure him, it's hit and miss. So I fully expect the Lions to go into Jerry's world and make him sad this week. Tampa Bay is in Chicago this week. Chicago leading the NFC North. If you're not in Chicago, raise your hand if you saw that coming. Tampa Bay, leading the NFC South. If you're not in Tampa Bay, raise your hand if you saw that coming. These are two teams right now that are playing good football. The Bears have been benefit, obviously, of the addition of Khalil Mack because Trubisky still, you know, he's very much a project, still developing. They rely heavily on their run game and scheme. The Buccaneers, they're kind of like a poor man's Kansas City. Big play, big play, big play. So you limit the big plays, they don't have it. They don't have that grinded out running back. That's why I listed them on Tuesday as one of those teams that would be a good fit for Le'Veon Bell because that would give them that guy. Then they would actually be multifaceted on offense. Cincinnati, tale of two teams, taking on Atlanta, tale of two teams. Depending on the game this year, you get, you've seen different teams. Last week, Atlanta took fire against New Orleans. The Bengals were hot week one and week two, cooled down last week. Joe Mixon's not in the mix. Neither is Freeman for Atlanta. But Calvin Ridley, the rookie, all of a sudden, whoo, three touchdowns last week. I expect another big game offensively. This one should be a shootout. Neither team is really all that great on defense. Or at least they're not performing as well as some of us might have hoped, some of their key players. Tack McKinley's got the groin injury he's dealing with. Atlanta loses both their starting safeties and a starting linebacker so far this year. Did not sign Eric Reed. They let the division rival get Eric Reed. Should be another shootout for these teams this week. Seattle's going into Arizona. Arizona's starting the rookie quarterback this week. Seattle getting some of their Depth and defenders back at the linebacker position. K.J. Wright should be healthy. Um, And, you know, Rashad Penny and Carlson, they've been doing all right at the running back. Now you need to get a little more out of that wide receiver core. Doug Baldwin should play this week, it sounds like. So that's going to be huge for Russell Wilson. In fact, this week, if you have Russell Wilson, you might want to play him. They could get an explosion this week. And it might not be because Doug Baldwin goes off, but it could be because now he's on the field. That helps some of the other guys get open. And Carlson's running like a beast. Face it. Right now, he wants to run through you. He's not trying to run into you. He's not trying to get around you. If he sees you, he's trying to run through you. And sometimes that's what you need. You need that guy to be out there, be doing his thing and trying to take you out. Like LeGarrette Blount for the Lions. I mean, you just got to have that guy who's got a little bit tough sometimes. And right now for Seattle, that's Carlson. That's the linebackers. You know, there's the reports this week. uh, Ian Rappaport reported that the Chiefs in Seattle have a deal in principle now 
for Earl Thomas. A uh, second round pick next year and a fifth round pick in 2020, a conditional pick. And apparently he's taken physicals and haven't heard much about it since then. But that's what Ian Rappaport has a source telling him this week. And we all know Earl Thomas with Eric Berry when he comes back from that heel injury. Man, those are two safeties. It's going to be, have to, it's going to be real hard to pass on that team with those two guys playing on the back end. Cleveland's going into Oakland this week. I, t- I picked it before the season, y'all. I said 7-9. and nine. I said they're going to surprise everybody. You know, I expected them to be better last year than 0-16. But, I mean, this is a Raiders team that can get got, and this is a Browns team that is hungry. Baker Mayfield wants to win. They're believing in him. They're behind him. You know, I don't like how they did Tyrod. Tyrod just keeps getting done wrong. But this is a Raiders team that get get got, and this is a Browns team that is starting to believe. And when you have a team that starts to believe and they start playing together, that's when it gets scary. The Saints, after all their points last week, They are taking on the Giants, who came alive last week. I stopped picking them. They did their thing. They got a win. The Saints, they went into overtime. Drew Brees did his thing, running the ball and passing the ball. Michael Thomas, 40 targets, 38 receptions so far on the season. Are you kidding me? That is ridiculous. So this could be a shootout, too. I mean, you got Odell. You got Sterling Shepard. Evan Ingram's not playing this week. You got Saquon Barkley there, so there's a lot of weapons for New York. How does that offensive line start to gel again now in the second week playing together? And the Saints, again, this is a team. They're starting to figure it out. If their defense can come around and start playing like they did last year, you've got another scary situation as far as this team, especially with what they can do on offense. It's just that's good football. 49ers without Jimmy G. You probably got C.J. Beathard starting at quarterback this week. I didn't really hear about the 49ers signing anybody else this week. They had a lot of workouts, but I didn't really hear about them signing anybody else, and I'm pretty sure they brought up the kid who was on their practice squad to join the uh, uh, 53 as the backup this week. And they're going into L.A. to face the Chargers. Stacked team, underperforming. I think Joey Bosa is still out this week. I did not see anything about him coming back and being ready to play. He might be. If he is, that kind of changes that defense when all of a sudden now you have two quality guys coming off each side instead of being able to key on the one guy um, there in the pass rush. That's going to help that back end, and that defense all of a sudden looks more like it did last year. Offense is starting to pick it up. They're starting to get more out of their running backs. Phillip Rivers is figuring out this new offense this year without the tight end position because Hunter Henry went down. And then Antonio Gates, face it, he's just old and slow, and he's going to box people out. That's all he can do at this point. Uh, Ravens, after they beat up Denver last week, they got to deal with the Steelers, who handed it to the Buccaneers on Monday night. Now, this is a Steelers team we talked about. They're in all kind of chaos right now. The team looks disoriented. They got the win this week. Le'Veon Bell still hasn't reported. That situation's still hanging over everybody. They're still getting asked about it. Ravens, they overachieved last week. They played the best game of the season so far. They beat a Denver team. They did everything possible to beat themselves. Both teams had bad refereeing. This is a division game. These two do not like each other. Terrell Suggs loves to shine against the Steelers. This is on Sunday night, under the lights, national TV. He gets up for games like this. You know, big-time vet, 11, 12 years in the league now. Big Ben loves to sack Big Ben, loves to get after the Steelers. This is going to be a good game. I think these two teams bring their best performance of the season in week four on Sunday night. Antonio Brown's going to be looking to show out. Connor's going to want to play good in his first nationally televised game. Big show Sunday night. Bell's still out. 
McDonald's going to want to have a return performance of the stiff arm. Juju Smith is going to be doing his thing. Be fun one to watch if you got time. Sunday night, you might want to check it out. And then Monday night, the Chiefs and their brazen offense and play calling is going to be here in Denver taking on the Broncos, Vaughn Miller, and the pass rushers. Which one will get it done? Can the Broncos limit the big plays? Slow Kansas City down. The best defense is a good offense sometimes, and that will require Denver to dominate the time of possession, not kick field goals and score touchdowns, requiring Kansas City then to try and only go big play to stay in the game, causing them to then make mistakes. You need to add pressure. You can't let him scramble for 10, 12 seconds like he's Russell Wilson before getting a pass off. Because your defenders on the back end are not going to stay with their speed for that long. It's not going to happen. There's no team in the NFL that can. So you got to get to them quick and your offense needs to stay on the field. You can't deal with three and outs. You can't have Marquette King going out there and having 35-yard punts. Because you will get beat. Or as Mark Slareth I heard say this morning, you will get dusted by double digits. Case Keenum's going to have to bring it. Guys cannot have drops in this game. They need to figure out how to keep Royce Freeman more involved in the running game. Phillip Lindsay could be the X factor again this week for that Broncos offense. And maybe even in the return game. So those are all the games the NFL has this week. These are how I'm picking them this week. Now, I can change them up to 15 minutes before game time in my Pick'em League. Five minutes, excuse me, before game starts. But I think I'm pretty good with the picks that I'm going to take this week. I'm taking the Rams tonight, which they're kicking off here any minute uh, against Minnesota. I got Atlanta over Cincinnati, Philadelphia over Tennessee. I'm going to take the Patriots over the Dolphins, Jacksonville to beat the Jets, Houston over Indy, The Packers over Buffalo, even though that one could be the upset this week, I think. I'm going to take Tampa Bay to make that one big play, uh, maybe even in the face of Khalil Mack to beat Chicago. Detroit to go into Dallas and win, like I said. Cleveland over Oakland. Seattle over Arizona. The Chargers to beat San Francisco. I'll take the Saints over the Giants. Kansas City to beat Denver. And I'm taking Pittsburgh over Baltimore this week. That's how I see week four. We'll see how it turns out. Now let's check in on Major League Baseball. They're down to three games left in the regular season. Playoffs getting ready to start. Like I said at the opening of the show, I was at the Rockies game today as they beat Philadelphia. Philadelphia looked like they were just going through the motions. It was like watching batting practice, watching them pitch and hit. I mean, they just... They didn't have any energy. They're out of it. So, you know, Rockies went out. They did their thing. They didn't (laughs) screw it up. That's my dog in the background there barking at my wife. Um, But the American League, it's set. Boston's the top seed. Yankees are a wild card. Indians win the Central. Houston wins the West. Oakland is the other wild card. So we're going to see Oakland versus New York in that wild card game. Um, winner to go on and face Boston, I believe, in the first round. On the National League side, like I was saying, Chicago and Milwaukee right now at 92 wins. They lose out and the Rockies win out. All of a sudden, we got a major tie for who's going to be that first seed. Atlanta's at 89 wins, tied with the Rockies right now. Um, Los Angeles, they're at 88 wins. St. Louis, 87 wins. So there is a plausible situation where like four of these teams could have the same record at the end of the season. That would be fun, highly unlikely, but it would be fun. Atlanta's won the East. They're in the playoffs. Chicago and Milwaukee, they're separated by a half game. In the West, you got Colorado and Los Angeles currently separated by a game. St. Louis is five and a half back. 
in um, the Central. They're now two games back overall in the wild card race. Or game back from uh, the Dodgers right now. Excuse me. Two games back from the Rockies. So there's a lot of play left between the Central and West as far as the playoff seeding is going to go. Atlanta, obviously, as the East winner, still some play as to what their seeding can be because they're not you know, the top team, but they have to finish higher than Colorado does or the Dodgers, for that matter, to get uh, that second seed. So a lot can happen in the next three games. Colorado's hot right now. They're a seven-game win streak. Some of their call-ups have really been playing well. Their closer, Wade Davis, he's been solid the last month or so. Again, this is when I start getting excited about baseball because the 162-game stretch is over. It's now down to the quality baseball. We're going to see these longer series. We're going to see these teams in the playoffs through the month of October. And it's exciting. Playoffs, elimination time, everything they worked for for the last you know, five months, six months, it's now down to the good stuff. So unless, you you know, that's your favorite sport and you're just an enthusiast and you check every game, this is when, if you're you're the casual person, you want to start tuning in. The Rockies are playing hot right now. The Dodgers have been up and down over the last month, but they're playing good baseball. St. Louis, they were hot, and now they seem to be falling off. Milwaukee's been solid the last two months. Yellick's more than likely going to be the National League MVP. Chicago's suffering injuries and domestic violence allegations right now, so who knows how that affects them going into the playoffs. And Atlanta, even though they won the East, I don't know that a lot of people expect a lot from them in the playoffs. But the playoffs will get started next week. I believe on the second or third, the playoffs are supposed to start for baseball. And the next three games, for the National League anyway, they mean a lot. So check in, watch it, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Now let's get to this this thing happening this morning good morning football i didn't watch it this morning i'm at work but i i caught the story and i see that kyle brandt is comparing prince to a dollar store michael jackson and somehow guns and roses got pulled into it and he started debating that guns and roses was better than prince and they had more songs and what does prince have like six songs So I thought I'd take a minute on the show, you know, as a fellow Kyle, because his comments, and I told him this today, I I tweeted at him, I said, look, things like this, when you say stuff like this, that gives all Kyles a bad name. So as a fellow Kyle, I'm going to go ahead and let Kyle Brandt know right now that no, Prince has more than six good songs. And I'm going to break down Prince and Guns N' Roses for you as far as their Hot 100. You know, how many songs did they get in the top 100 songs? Well, in the top 100, Prince had five number one hits, 19 top tens, and 46 songs overall. So, you know, he said he had six good songs. So we'll just go through the list a little bit, and I'll pick out the ones that most people know. When Doves Cry. Let's Go Crazy. Cream. Kiss. The Bat Dance from the original Batman in 1989. You Got the Look. Purple Rain. Raspberry Beret. The Most Beautiful Girl in the World. Diamonds and Pearls. Sign of the Times. Little Red Corvette. Seven. Delirious. I Would Die for You. I want to be your lover. 1999. 1999 is the 20th song on this list. And he had the nerve to say something like he's the dollar store Michael Jackson. Or that he's not as influential or as good as Guns N' Roses. So we're 20 songs in at 1999 finally shows up. So I'll just stop right there because Guns N' Roses doesn't even have that many songs on the list. So I'm already 20 in, might as well stop, not go through the other four 26 songs that appeared at some point on the top 100. 
So Guns N' Roses, let's give them their due. I'm a Guns N' Roses fan, but I'm, I'm not going to be crazy about it and claim they're better than they are. Sure, Prince had his issues. So did Guns N' Roses. In fact, Prince had issues with Michael Jackson. They didn't like each other. They had beef. Michael Jackson thought he was a very rude person. So Guns N' Roses, number one hits. One. Six top tens, pretty good. And 13 songs overall. Now, this is a group that, you know, they broke up a lot. They had their issues. Uh, Axl Rose, one of the great rock vocalists of all time. Slash, one of the greatest guitarists of all time. So not, not to slight them at all. Their quality, good. I still enjoy their music. Classic songs. Sweet Child of Mine. November Rain. Paradise City. Welcome to the Jungle. Don't Cry. You know, good songs that a lot of people know. Yesterday's. Night Train. But to say that they're somehow equal to music-wise or above that of Prince is ridiculous. You can't say stuff like that. It's not true. Not even on a football show. Not when you're just trying to be fun. Not right. Not true. Prince deserves the credit he's due as one of the all-time greats. That being said, now that I said it straight with some numbers, number of songs they had, I mean, the hits are the hits, right? You can't argue numbers. We're going to move on. And we're going to get real a little bit. On Tuesday's show, I pointed out that Eric Reed was still out there. I pointed out that he has been blackballed for taking the same stance that Colin Kaepernick did. I pointed out that you could not give the argument that he would not be a quality player on your team as with the season he had, he was an all pro. Now, he's been sitting out there. Many teams needed safeties and or had safeties that got hurt. The team that reached out this week that finally grew a pair and said, you know what, he's going to help us win, did not ask him about his stance and if he was going to continue to protest. They brought him in on football reasons, which does not hurt his collusion case against the league because collusion can be for a time period, not for all time. I hope he does continue to kneel or raise a fist because he has been fighting the good fight. It is why we kneel. There is not social justice in this country. There is not justice for brown and black people in this country. We took one step today with Eric Reed getting his job back, being able to again play in the NFL for the Carolina Panthers. So I salute the Panthers and their owner for making the right decision and doing it based on football reasons, because that's what they're there for, to play football, right? We all want our athletes to shut up and play sports. That's what we said, right? That's what we put out on the TVs and social media, right? That's what our president said, right? So football reasons, a very good player gets his spot back. I hope his stance does not change. I hope he continues to fight for the good fight. Eric Reed, Colin Kaepernick, Real Deal Sports Talk with KP will continue to support you. Until next time, you know how we do. Be real.